I'm trying to talk into this thing. I hope you all had a pleasant lunch. Uh, this got about a presentation very shortly from uh, KU2Y, Alan Johnson. Uh, the current uh, itinerary shows TBC at 14.30. Uh, that will be Karen, who's in the background over there, giving us an in, a update on Aris Affairs. In case anybody doesn't want to listen to Kieran, um, at 14.15 the doors will be locked, you won't be able to get out, and you'll have to sit and listen to it whether you want to or not. Anyway, without further ado, I'll pass you over to uh, add the presentation. I'm Alan Johnson, KU2Y, and this presentation is on the CubeSat SIM project, an educational project sponsored by AMSAT North America. So uh, I'm the Vice President for Educational Relations for AMSAT North America, and I'm also an Associate Teaching Professor at Villanova University in Pennsylvania here in the United States in the uh, Electrical and Computer Engineering Department. So just a little bit about myself. Uh, I've been a ham now for, gosh, 40 years. <laughs> um, and uh, actually really early on uh, in my, uh, in my uh, ham career, I uh, discovered uh, satellites. I discovered AMSAT. And uh, one of the first things that I did was actually uh, build an antenna and write some tracking software for my Commodore 64. And uh, I successfully uh, made some contacts using uh, AMSAT Oscar 8 at the time. So, so that kind of gives you a gives you a gives you a timeline there. Uh, I've been uh, uh, vice president for educational relations for AMSAT now for I guess four years, and um, one of the main things that I've worked on is this CubeSat Sim project. And uh, it's a, it's an honor to be invited to speak to you today. Um, it's a shame I can't be there in person. I, I always enjoy visiting uh, visiting the UK. Maybe we'll do that uh, sometime in the future. So uh, I'm going to start off by going through the uh, CubeSat Sim team members because this this really has been a been an effort by by a lot of different volunteers. Uh, we'll talk about what the CubeSat Sim is go through some, some technical details. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna assume, assume a reasonable level of, of, of technical interest. Um, uh, I'll talk about the status of the project, some current challenges. And then I have some very specific questions for, for, for you AMSAT UK members. And uh, uh, you know, again, it's a shame I can't be with you live to, to have a back and forth about it, but instead I'm sure you're the discussion you have uh, uh, will be relayed back to me, and uh, and hopefully we can we can do some interesting things in the future. So, just talk a bit about the uh, some of the some of the team. You can see from here there's a, a lot of lot of names on the list. Uh, we've been working on this project for for quite a few years, um, and uh, in terms of in terms of the hardware. Um, there's basically three of us uh, that have that have done the done the design of the of the hardware. Uh, I've written basically all of the software uh, for it. Uh, I have a team that is developing educational materials, so we're still in the early days with that. But hopefully, uh, hopefully in 2023 we'll have some some things to release. Uh, we have others working on documentation. Um, beta builders have been a, a key key aspect of this uh, of, of this project um, you know people that just people that just uh, you know did did early early building and and provided feedback to improve things uh, it's been extremely helpful so thank you to all of them uh, we've had students at uh, at universities and high schools that have also provided feedback as well um, CAD work for the uh, for the 3D printed frame, and also some some of the uh, some of the RF uh, testing as well. So so thank you to to everybody who has contributed uh, to this project. So, what is the CubeSat Sim project? Uh, it's an educational program 
uh, here at AMSAT in North America. And it's, it's designed really for, uh, for STEM uh, education. So science, technology, engineering, and math. And uh, it's, it's great for uh, university engineering programs, for, for high school programs. Um, it's great for the, the amateur radio community. Um, and uh, in the future, we, we hope to use it to do outreach uh, to sort of you know, less, less traditional venues, including libraries, museums, maker fairs, uh, anywhere where people are, are interested in space and technology and, uh, and, and building things. Uh, the, the, the CubeSat Sim is a, is a potential, potential project to, to get them involved. Uh, and ultimately, you know, help uh, encourage people to get their ham radio license and to and to get involved and uh, and and find out, you know, what we all love so much about amateur radio. So, what is the CubeSat Sim? Uh, it's CubeSat Sim is short for the CubeSat Simulator. Of course, a CubeSat is a small educational satellite uh, that have been just gaining uh, in popularity over the years. And uh, you know they're they're ten centimeter cubed increments. Uh, the the CubeSat sim right now is is a one U, so it's basically ten centimeters cubed, and uh, it's a simulator in that it is a fully functional uh, model, but it's not designed for space. Nothing in it is designed for space. It's a, it's a satellite for your desktop or a satellite for the classroom, um, but it does have working solar panels, rechargeable batteries. And it transmits real, uh, real radio telemetry on the 70 centimeter hand bands, um, and it's uh, it, it's quite a quite a fun project to build if you're interested in soldering and 3D printing and that that sort of thing. Um, it's not an it, it's not a beginner project. I would not recommend it as a first soldering project. Um, it's also not an easy project. You will probably not complete it in in a, in a day or or in a weekend. Um, but um, but it, it it is a lot of fun. I've certainly enjoyed it and uh, and put a lot of time into it uh, over the years. So uh, if you look inside the CubeSat Sim, it's a it's a three board stack, and then a Raspberry Pi single board computer plugs into it. Uh, you can see in this in this picture here, the 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 Pi Zero is the is at the very bottom there. You can just see the the uh, memory SD card um, sticking out there. Um, and uh, so you build these boards, solder them up, stack them. And, uh, and, and so it includes, um, as well as the Raspberry Pi computer, it includes an Arduino compatible micro, microcontroller um, to, to run the payloads. Uh, it includes environmental sensors, uh, rechargeable batteries and a whole set of voltage and current sensors, so you can monitor the battery, the the bus, uh, and the voltage and the current from from all of the solar solar panels. So you, you can do lots of interesting demonstrations with it, and you can generate realistic looking telemetry that is comparable to what you would get from a uh, from a satellite uh, on orbit. Uh, so. The, the thing that the, the, uh, that that I really like about it is that it 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 transmits real uh, real radio telemetry and it uses real satellite uh, formats. And so the way you decode it is by using real software. For example, this shows uh, uh, the uh, Fox Telem software, which is what AMSAT North America uses for their uh, for our um, Fox series of CubeSats and, uh, and going forward we'll use for our golf series. Uh, and so it's the same exact software. You just, uh, you just install a CubeSat SIM spacecraft file and then everything else is the same. And, uh, and the, the, uh, the CubeSat SIM basically mimics the, the, the uh, data format and, uh, and, and it, uh, the received signal looks and sounds like like the real signal, except it's a it's an awful lot stronger <laughs> when there's only a few inches between your uh, between your transmitter and receiver. You get a nice clean clean signal there. You can see in the uh, in the eye diagram. So I'll just go through briefly the the three different boards. Um, so 
The uh, main board is the one that the Raspberry Pi Zero plugs into. Um, it's got eight voltage and current sensors, four on the top and four on the bottom of the board. Um, it has a, 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 a charging control circuit for the batteries and a boost regulator for, for generating the, the five volt bus there. And in addition, it's got some LEDs, uh, push button, and it has a USB charger on it. Uh, this board also has the um, has a low pass filter um, to to clean up the uh, uh, clean up the signal that we generate. Uh, the battery board, um, we use nickel metal hydride batteries. Uh, we know this is not you know the latest battery technology, but nickel metal hydride batteries are very safe. Uh, they they do not catch fire. They do not explode. Uh, in fact, if you abuse them, they often recover afterwards. So, so they're very good for, for, uh, for use in an educational settings, and they're perfectly adequate for, for operating for, for multiple hours in, in demo mode. And uh, they can be charged with the, with the solar panels if you leave it in the sun. Uh, in a room, normal room lighting doesn't, doesn't activate solar cells enough, so, uh, so that, that's why we have the USB-C. Uh, charger there to um, to charge it up for demos. And then the final board is the STEM payload board. So we decided to to, to separate the the payload sensors into some Arduino code, um, just because typically on a real satellite they they are separate. The housekeeping telemetry is separate from your from your experiments and uh, and and payloads. Um, and also programming these is a lot easier. Um, so we, we encourage people to add their own sensors to the, uh, to the I squared C bus. Uh, it does have two built-in sensors, a, uh, a BME 280, which does temperature, pressure, humidity, and estimates altitude as well. And a, uh, and a three axis accelerometer gyroscope, the MPU 6050, which is the, the purple board and the blue board um, in this photo. Um, so you can uh, you can get some get some fun data with with just those simple sensors, and you can uh, in the expansion area there you can add your own you can add a GPS sensor, uh, you can add other other environmental sensors uh, as well. So the uh, in order to receive the the signals, you need a ground station, and uh, we use the the same because we we use actual. Uh, telemetry formats. Um, we, we use the actual software that people use for, um, for satellites. Uh, and the option is you can just install the software uh, yourself uh, on your own computer, or we have a pre-built uh, image with all the software installed um, that runs on a Raspberry Pi. Um, it's, it's called the Fox in a Box. And uh, you can just download the image uh, burn it and then run it on, uh, on say a, um, uh, say a Pi 3B or a Pi 4B, and uh, and you, you just have simple you know scripts to to run all the different software. Uh, so that includes Fox Telem, which which uh, decodes the telemetry, uh, Direwolf, which is used for uh, APRS uh, mode, QSSTV. Which decodes the slow scan TV images that, that are taken with the camera on board and transmitted. Uh, Cubic SDR, which is a nice graphical um, SDR receiving software. Uh, RTL TCP, so you can uh, uh, so you can uh, send the uh, SDR data over a network and, and decode it on something else. Uh, Gpredict for for tracking. Uh, and also KLA Tracker is, a, is another nice uh, tracking software. So the CubeSat SIM has um, five different modes. So I'm not gonna go through, through these in detail, but you can look up the details there. Uh, but basically these are, these are modes that cover all the different modes that, uh, that AMSAT's um, satellites include. So it includes APRS, uh, slow scan TV, uh, frequency shift keying, it's actually the data under voice used by the uh, Fox series of CubeSats. Um, BPSK, which is what the Golf uh, 1200 bit per second, which is what the uh, Golf uh, CubeSats are going to use going forward. 
Um, and then finally also, uh, also CW. So, uh, so just status on the, uh, on the project where we are right now. Um, as of now, uh, more than 100 uh, CubeSat sims have been built over the years. Uh, I'm, I'm sure there are many that I haven't heard about, but we have sold lots of um, PCB sets. I've heard from lots of people, found them on social media, um, and uh, quite, quite happy with the way the project is going. Um, and it's been shown at various events in the US and, and, and around the world too. Uh, and uh, we do have some uh, some uh, papers that we've written with, with exercises and experiments, but we're developing a set of materials in the future that, um, that, that will be useful for, for people looking to, uh, to integrate it into the classroom. Um, we also have loaners that we've built in shipping cases, fully assembled with, uh, with ground stations and uh, AMSAT North America members can, can basically sign them out and borrow them. We ship them to them and use them for their own events, for their own classroom activities, for, for their ham fests or whatever. And th those have been very popular over the years. Um, and in addition to, to help, uh, help people build, we have uh, made CubeSats in blank PCB sets available on the AMSAT store. Um, and uh, basically you can, uh, everything about the project is open source. So you can download the CAD files. You can also download the Gerber files, which are the manufacturing files for the printed circuit boards. And uh, you can send them off to any fabricator. The only problem is most fabricators have minimum quantities of, of, uh, of, of say five. So, uh, so you end up having to order 15 boards <laughs> instead of three, uh, which, is, which is not that convenient. So, uh, so we, we uh, basically order them in bulk uh, and, then, uh, and then put them into sets so you, can, so you can buy just one. And in addition, we also have the surface mount components installed. And we'll all talk a little bit more about this later. Um, and we've also, um, had some beta light boards, and the, the light board is one that just that just plugs into a Pi, but it doesn't have the battery, it doesn't have solar panels, um, but it transmits all the different telemetry modes. Um, so it's it's good for it's good for learning about it and and doing things. Um, so we've done some fully assembled ones of those and made them available uh, in in limited quantities. Uh, so so we have we have experimented with those too. So some of the challenges uh, that we're facing with the CubeSat SIM project, anybody who works in, in the electronics industry now knows about the global supply chain issues. It's just an incredible nightmare. The past few years, um, the availability of everything is a problem and it varies on a day-by-day -day basis. Um, big impact on this project has been the avail availability of Raspberry Pi computers. They've just been really hard to find. Uh, and the CubeSat SIM requires a Pi Zero or a Pi Zero Two, um, and the ground station needs a Pi Three B or a Four B. Now you can get away without the ground station; you can just use a Windows or or a Linux computer, but it means you have to install all the software and configure it all. But you really can't build a CubeSat SIM without a Pi Zero, and they're very hard to find right now. And unfortunately, it's uh, it's it's not going away yet. Um, I do have a small stock that I use for helping out with educational projects. Um, so, so the project is not, it's not at a standstill, but it's, uh, it's, it's in a difficult place right now. Um, also, just, just every other part is just, they just go out of stock and just, you know, lead times become, you know, 12 months, 18 months, two years. It's, it's crazy. So we're just constantly updating the bill of materials to, um, to, to, so that people can still order parts. So uh, in response to this, we've been working on developing a version that does not need a Raspberry Pi Zero and instead uses the Raspberry Pi Pico, which is the microcontroller board, uh, which, has, which has very good availability and also very low cost. Um, so we're, we're working on that now. We have a beta version. Um, we, we will hopefully have a have a um, do a beta release by the end of the year, 
and in 2023 we'll hopefully have uh, have this available. And uh, unfortunately, there's a lot of hardware changes um, because um, you know just without the Pi Zero, we we can't use many libraries that we were relying on. So this has been a very big project for the team that we've been working on uh, for the past three or four months. And if you want more information on it, you can see the the uh, the GitHub Wiki link there. Okay, so wanted to tee up a couple of questions that hopefully you can have some discussion and get back to me, and we can we can maybe come up with some with some things to do jointly. Uh, so right now. Uh, we only ship the PCBs to U.S. addresses, and this is just due to logistical issues here in the U.S. Um, also, shipping um, from the U.S. to the rest of the world is just outrageously expensive these days. It's just it's just crazy. Um, so we currently do not have any plans to ship to the rest of the world, um, but I would I would I would love to have this available to the rest of the world. So so I don't know if there's interest in your organization or some other organization in in stepping in and and doing this. And essentially, it would just involve uh, placing some bulk orders and then taking the orders and shipping them to the UK and possibly the rest you know the rest of Europe or the rest of the world. Um, the hardware, it's all licensed Creative Commons, so there's no there's no issues with it, and I, I'm happy to support you. Um, in terms of what we do, uh, AMSAT North America, we use a company called PCB Way in China, and we just upload the Gerber files and have them. Uh, we usually do them in batches of twenty. Um, and for the main board, we have them do some assembly. We put the there's a couple of surface mount device SMD components and we have them do them because those are tricky for hobbyists. Um, also, it ensures that there is a low pass filter on the board, which, which means less interference on our hand bands. And the USB-C connector is much stronger if it's, uh, if, if, it's done, uh, if it's done surface mount on the board by professionals. Um, so, uh, so anyway, so we order them in batches of 20, we put them into, we make them, you know, we, we group them so you get one of each. And then uh, and then offer them on our store. So I'm I'm I'd be really happy to support anyone else who who would like to uh, like to do this um, to 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 make it uh, make it available to the rest of the world. So another question for you um, is uh, the CubeSat Sim basically can emulate all different modes because it's software. It's just you know we can we can do whatever we want. And uh, you know, currently we support the modes, all the telemetry modes that our Fox and Golf CubeSats do. Uh, I've, I've always thought that it would be cool to support, uh, to have a fun cube mode. And since that's BPSK 1200 uh, bits per second, it's really just, it's really just the software um, to figure out the, uh, the telemetry format and the details. Um, and if we did that, then you could basically put it into this FunCube emulation mode, and then you would decode the telemetry in the FunCube dashboard. And one of the things we found is that it's a great tool for training people to use FoxTelem, which then gets the real telemetry from our CubeSats. Um, so so it's, we, we found it really useful. Um, it's also great for training people to how to do um, SSTV so that when uh, Aris, does uh, events from the ISS, uh, people are ready to do it. So, so anyway, so if there's interest in doing this, um, you know, we can do the development uh, on for the CubeSat Sim software, but we would need your support in terms of uh, in terms of um, testing it and in terms of getting the getting the format correct. Um, so I, I'd be interested in hearing whether you're interested in this, and maybe I don't know. I, I hear about your you're looking at your next generation of FunCube, maybe. Instead of uh, instead of doing it for your for the current version of FunCube, maybe you'd like to do it for the future version, and you could even release it ahead of the actual uh, before the actual new version comes out there. So again, you can train people and and get people excited for for your new satellite before it launches. So anyway, so I'm I'm looking forward to your input on uh, on these two these two questions. 
So anyway, so if you're interested in the CubeSat Sim um, project, it's be great for you to, to get involved. Uh, we do have a, a Twitter account, uh, CubeSat Sim. On, on uh, social media, we use the hashtag CubeSat Sim to, to, to highlight uh, when we do things. Uh, and as I mentioned, AMSAT North America members can, can borrow a, a loaner. Um, and, uh, you know, basically there's lots of different places that, that could use these to, to, to teach people about satellites, to get them excited about STEM. Um, and of course, you want to build build one yourself. Um, that, that's that's great as well. It's a, it's quite a fun project. It's about four hundred dollars uh, to build, although that that varies with <laughs> with supply chain costs. Um, so anyway, so so I'd, I'd I'd love to hear from you. I, I I enjoy hearing back from people that are working on them. We have an active forum on GitHub, so you have questions. Uh, issues during your build, you can share them and, and get help from from other other CubeSat Sim builders. So, um, so I just have a couple last links here. There's CubeSatSim.org, uh, of course, AMSAT's web page there, and then a link to the wiki that has all kinds of information, including the assembly instructions. and uh, And you can reach me at kuty at arrl .net. So I just want to end with uh, with some acknowledgments. Uh, this this CubeSat simulator didn't come out of nowhere. I, I didn't invent the idea. Uh, it really goes back to two people: uh, Mark Spencer, WA8SME, and Bob Brunega, WB4APR. Um, Mark Spencer built the original CubeSat simulator for the for the ARRL many years ago, and Bob Brunega uh, had a uh, had a LabSat which he used to, to demonstrate principles and, uh, and teach things. So th this is really building on those ideas. Um, and also just, just want to acknowledge uh, other key contributors, including Pat Kilroy, and, uh, and also just acknowledge the, all the open source hardware and software that's part of the CubeSat Sim. We would not be able to do it uh, without all those communities that have contributed all the work. And finally, thank you to the support of the AMSAT uh, Board of Directors and the members of AMSAT for this. Well, thank you. Thank you to Alan for that. I'm sure that uh, there'll be some people in the room who'll be rushing off to build their own personal CubeSat they can have at home. So that was a recording, wasn't it? That was a recording, yes. I was ask a question. Well, you can, uh, you can ask a question. An you won't get an answer, Jim, but uh, <laughs> I'm sure somebody in the room will be able to answer your question. So please feel free to email him. You, you did notice.